Right, let's try that again. I think I've sorted out my camera problems, I've sorted out my sound problems. Let's sort this out. We are talking about the Tamron 7200mm f2.8 G2 lens. That's the full title, I'm probably not gonna call it that again. Why did I get this lens? I've had a 7300 for some time. It's an old Sigma that I think I bought secondhand when I first got into photography, and I didn't ever think I used it that much, so I didn't really feel that I needed to upgrade, until I realized that part of the reason that I wasn't using it that much was because actually I wasn't very happy with the results. It's actually it's over here. This is my old Sigma. 70 to 300, f4 to f5.6 at 300. It's not a brilliant lens. And I realized I just wasn't using it that much because it's not that sharp. It's a dated, cheap lens. So I bought the Tamron 7200. Gives me slightly less reach but actually it works so much better. I've suddenly realized how many uses there are for it, just generally for any 7200 that I hadn't really thought about before. I've used it for portrait work, I've used it for landscape work, I've used it for wildlife work, I've used it for low light work. Being 2.8 is a really nice fast lens to be able to do some low light work as well. Why did I get the Tamron? So Sigma, Nikon, Tamron all make 70 to 200 2.8. The biggest difference with the Tamron one is it's significantly cheaper and it's significantly lighter. This is not a super light lens. This is not like a travel lens. And it is, it's fantastic for travel, but it's not one that you're gonna really love traveling with. It is quite a weighty lens. There is a lot of glass in there and you can see it's just a whole lot of really nice glass, but it is lighter than the others. There is some question and some compromise about the weather sealing and maybe longevity of it, but actually I've had no issues with it at all. I've used it in the rain, I've used it traveling, like I say, I've been to Mauritius with it, I've been up to Scotland with it, and it's performed brilliantly. I have no issues with the function of that lens at all. That's where this lens shines. It is an amazing all-round lens. It just gives you that m bit more reach than a 28 to 70, but it equally is not as big and as cumbersome as the 150 to 600. I mean, it just takes up much less space. It's much lighter, much easier to deal with. There are a few minor issues, so I'm going to cover the minor issues before I get on to anything else. The biggest issue, and this is a really silly little thing, but these switches on this side, which control your vibration control and your autofocus and your focus limiter, they seem to get knocked a lot. Particularly when I'm carrying it on my hip, I just seem to be able to knock it into the wrong vibration control mode, and it just it sometimes takes a moment. Thankfully, you can spot it straight away. You're looking and realizing you want to focus on something slightly closer and it's not allowing you to focus. You realize you knock that switch or you can see it's not as stable as you want it to be. So you just realize you need to check those switches. So I've now got into the habit, if I'm carrying it on my hip, of checking it regularly just to make sure that I'm still in the right mode. That is really the only major downside to it. Other than that, it works beautifully. Like I say, I've used it for wildlife photography and it doesn't have the reach that a 150 to 600 does, but actually most of the time you're taking pictures, unless it's really safari type wildlife, there was one instance in Mauritius where I wanted to take a picture of a dolphin, well I was taking pictures of dolphins and a spinner jumped up in the distance, but to be honest, I can crop in if needs be. I've used it at the zoo, and with the 2.8, it really nicely throws out any fences, any glass, anything like that, so you can get some really nice shots. Depends how close you are to the fence. This is one of the little tips I'll give you for any zoo shooting. Get The closer you get to the fence, 
the easier it is to be able to blur that out. You can see this in the shot of the Tiger that actually you can see the cross hatching of the fence just sort of starting to come into focus but then the fence was probably four meters away from where I could stand at that point so it's not really that surprising. I've used it for low light photography where it's 2.8 it is brilliant in low light so whether that's actually shooting at night or what I've used it for a number of times is in indoors portraiture because it works so well for indoors portraiture. You can be on the other side of the room, you can feel very, you're not being intrusive in terms of the people that are there, you're not getting in their face with the camera, and yet you can get really nice and close to be able to take pictures that you wouldn't normally be able to get with a zoom, to be able to actually zoom in and get that detail, that range. That actually, I have to say, is one of the things that I really love about it. I love primes, I use primes a lot, but being able to zoom in is a huge advantage. And so these couple of pictures showing you from sort of zooming from the 70 through to the 200 range, you can see how much difference it actually makes. And you can also see with the focusing dif differences where you get that separation from the background, it really, you can, change the picture massively with this lens, with the focusing position and with the focal length as well. You can really actually nail that shot 100%. For landscapes, it's brilliant. At 70 mil, you can actually capture a lot of the landscape. You can, it's not a wide angle, huge sweeping landscape type shot, but you can get really nice details. You can pick the details in the landscape and sometimes, that's more important. I try and explain this a lot, that just because when you're presented with a landscape, it looks beautiful, doesn't mean that that's gonna translate well into a photograph. Sometimes you can be in the most breathtaking area and you think it looks absolutely staggering, but it's the little details, all the little details together that bring it together. And so this lens, as a landscape lens, you can bring those shots together and really actually create a much more interesting image that shows why you found it so fascinating to be there rather than just constantly capturing that whole image. Zooming in, you can really pick out the fine details. And with a landscape, it also, that depth of field, people always talk about getting everything in focus. So landscape photographers tend to work at sort of F8 to F, 11 to be able to really get everything in focus but actually sometimes to be able to throw the foreground out of focus works really well and to be able to compress that distance as well can be a fantastic effect within landscape portraiture landscape photography not landscape portraiture a couple of little bits comes with an arca shoe mount on here the one thing i would say the tripod that i use although it's sort of machined all the way around to be able to use it as an arc shoe. I haven't found many that will manage to go that way. They tend to go that way, which is fine. It just means that it's a question of mounting it on sideways, as it were. You can take this off. It comes with a rubber ring to be able to fit on there. The little detail, and maybe this is just with all Tamron's, and I just really like it, the lens cap is just oddly pleasing. It has a really lovely, subtle flare to it. So, focus please. Yeah, it's just got this subtle flare down here that just, I really like the way that looks and sits on the body. I know that's silly, but hang on. See what I mean? It just is a bit more pleasing. It does have a rubber seal just here, which will help it keep it. Will help it keep it? Will keep it a little bit more weatherproofed. So, first of all, you need to ask yourself, do you want a 7200? If you do, get this one. This one works brilliantly. I tried out the others. Optically, I could not see a huge difference. So I'm sure if you're pixel peeping, you might be able to see a slight difference, but for 99.9% .9 of the work, I can't really see a difference there. I've not had an issue with lens flare, I've not had any issue with vignetting, I've not had any issue with lens aberrations, anything like that. And it's, like I say, significantly cheaper. The vibration control works well, even actually for video. For video, this is, 
it's a very usable lens. And actually that compression and that depth of field for video works really well in the occasions that you can actually use it. So I've used this a lot for fitness work because actually, particularly outside, you can get yourself much further away and you can get a, a really nice cinematic look for filming from a distance. In terms of noise from focusing, I've not noticed a huge amount of noise from focusing. In fact, I'll show you a couple clips here where actually you can hear my breathing louder than you can hear the focusing. And this was from in camera. This was no external microphone used at all. This was just the in-body microphone because I wasn't planning on using the sound from these videos at all. Into your run into the corner. Yeah. Put the bum out to the back. That's what they call me. Yeah, <laughs> Dancing. Probably still up. Good. It also points out to me how loudly I actually breathe when I'm filming, so that's a little bit weird. But yeah, it's not a noisy focuser, which is fantastic. I don't know that you're going to be able to film a lot indoors with it. And you could, but it's you've got to ask yourself, why, why would you be filming indoors with it? Because it's it works best from a distance. One of the reasons I got this was to replace a 105 2.8 macro lens that I've got. On that, there's a little bit of a compromise in as much as this is much more versatile than that lens. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit bigger, but it doesn't have the macro focusing capabilities that that did. Having said that, I've got some really nice flower portraits I've been very happy with where I wouldn't be able to get in quite as close as I would with a macro lens, but I can still get the shots that I want with it. So if you really need that 105 macro, go with that. But this actually has worked brilliantly, even in the places I'd need that. The details are beautifully sharp and crisp. Depth of field is still wonderful, particularly close up. Yeah, generally, I would recommend it thoroughly. Yeah, my, my unbiased review. I've owned it for probably about nine months, I've used it a lot. And I at no point have really thought this isn't the lens that I wanted or it's not doing what I wanted it to do. Focusing is crisp and sharp. What more can I say about it? If there's anything that you want to know about it, please ask me questions down below. If there is anything else you'd like me to review, please comment below. Please subscribe to the channel. I've got a few lens reviews that I'm going to be doing in the next probably few weeks. I had a bit of a rearrangement of my lenses and just had a bit of a think about what I actually needed. If you saw some of my previous lens review videos, I talked about wanting to get a 50mm replacement for my old camera because with the Z system... Oh, by the way, this works really well with the Z system. Just absolutely fine with an F to Z uh, adapter. Works absolutely fine, no issues with that whatsoever. Yeah, I, I wanted to replace an old 51.4, and so I've, I've got a couple of videos about what I've done about that. I think that's about it, so thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, please like if you like the video, and thank you very much. Bye-bye.